Welcome to the Redline Report, powered by HireMaster. I'm Trey Griggs. Looking inside the numbers this week, recently released supply chain data demonstrates further cooling in transportation markets. The July Logistics Managers Index, published by Freightways, decreased 4.3 percentage points to 60.7, which is the lowest data recorded since May 2020. Additionally, the Transportation Prices Subindex decreased 11.8 points to 49.5. However, the report noted that the exit rate for the month was 8 percentage points higher than the beginning of the month. In the report, Transportation Prices recorded a 54.7 reading in the last week of July. The report continued, quote, we will continue to watch this pace to determine whether this late July surge was an aberration or a sign of breaking from the usual July doldrums and peak season coming over the horizon, end quote. Additionally, a 7.4 jump in available capacity drove pricing lower in the month, which was the fastest growth rate for capacity since April 2019. However, the increase in capacity was much more muted in the last week of July. Transportation utilization was up less than a point from June at 59.3, but the index marked 27 consecutive months of growth. The 12-month forward-looking survey conducted showed survey respondents suspecting transportation prices will remain high. Cummins Inc., a leading manufacturer of engines and power systems equipment, reported strong second quarter earnings in North America while withstanding one-time charges and COVID lockdowns in China. The second quarter report reflected a net income of $702 million, compared to $600 million in the same quarter last year of 2021. Earnings per diluted share were $494 compared to $410 a year ago. Additionally, record quarter revenues of $6.6 billion increased 8% from the same quarter last year. For the full year, Cummins remained close to its projection of an 8% increase in revenue, and of that, $4 billion came in North America, up 15% year over year. According to Jennifer Rumsey, who recently became Cummins' seventh CEO, stated that the contributing factor to strong second quarter earnings was the multiple collaborations Cummins regularly formed, such as working with Domino Trucks North America, Chevron, and Walmart. Rumsey said that, quote, these customer collaborations are significant steps in alignment with our Destination Zero strategy to evolve our company, our products, and our customers' products to the technologies needed for a decarbonized world, end quote. For Freight Insights this week, the Port of New York and New Jersey have announced a new fee on a long-dwelling import or export containers. The goal of the tariff is to reduce an excess of empty containers dwelling at the port and free up space for container pickup. This includes both loaded and empty containers. The Port Director of New York and New Jersey, Bethan Rooney, announced the fee will go into effect in September, pending a mandatory 30-day federal notice. Rooney explained, quote, the Port of New York and New Jersey are facing record import volumes, leading to empty containers accumulating in and around the port complex that are now affecting the regional supply chain that is already under stress from various sources across the country, end quote. Additionally, the port is setting mandatory container export levels. Under the new rules, ocean carriers' total outgoing container volume needs to equal or exceed 110% of their incoming container volume during the same period. Failure to adhere to the new rule will result in a fee of $100 per container of imbalance. Rail, vol rail volume is not included. Port officials announced the fee will be assessed uh, once the container crisis eases. Democratic Senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York announced the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. The act is said to raise $739 billion in revenue by closing corporate tax loopholes and invests in domestic energy production and manufacturing with a goal of reducing carbon emissions by roughly 40% by 2030. However, one of the provisions in the bill is a ban on automated cargo equipment, yet freight markets are not in agreement with the new inflation bill. NATSU, which represents truck stops and travel plazas, is urging lawmakers to oppose it because the bill provides a higher tax credit of up to $1.75 per gallon for sustainable aviation fuel production. David Fialkov, NATSO's Executive Vice President of Government Affairs, said, quote, This legislation purports to create a technology-neutral clean fuels tax scheme, which fuels retailers have long supported. However, favorable treatment for sustainable aviation fuel flies in the face of this approach, end quote. 
Fyakov argued that sustainable aviation fuel is not as environmentally friendly as renewable diesel and will cost taxpayers more. In the news this week, after a week-long protest over AB5, truckers being sued by the city of Oakland and port commissioners have claimed a small victory after Alameda County Superior Court Judge Delbert Glee decided to delay granting a temporary restraining order the port officials were seeking. Miguel Silva, the owner of an intermodal company in Oakland, is one of five defendants named in the port suit against truckers protesting the AB5. Silva said, quote, instead of ruling in favor of the city and of the port, which have unlimited resources and power, the judge is taking a closer look, which is a small victory for the owner operators who don't have any money to hire a legal team, end quote. The Oakland Police Department commented that no truckers were cited during the week-long protest that started on July 18. Judge Glee didn't state when he would issue his ruling. In other news, Amazon, the world's largest marketplace, has begun same-day deliveries of products from local retail stores. The service is available to Prime members in a dozen U.S. metro areas, such as Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Las Vegas, Miami, Phoenix, Seattle, Washington, D.C., and more. As of right now, only a few retailers are available to Prime members, primarily PacSun, GNC, Superdry, and Diesel. The service is free for Prime members who spend a minimum of $25 on their order. Sarah Matthew, the director of Amazon Delivery Experience, said, quote, We are excited to see this model come to life and look forward to adding more brands, stores, and locations to the program, end quote. And that's all for this week's Redline Report. I'm Trey Griggs. Be sure to follow on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch each episode and leave us a like and a comment. We'll see you next time on the Redline Report, powered by HireMaster.